Hello, this is a fifth grade teacher from Russell McDowell, and I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on how to navigate Google Classroom. So the very first thing that I want you to make sure is that you are using Google Chrome as your web browser. Okay, so I am using Google Chrome right now. I'm going to open that back up. And the next thing that you're going to do is open up an incognito window. And what this is going to do is it's going to kind of bypass all of the saved passwords and saved accounts that you may have on a device that you're using. And it's going to allow you to get into your Google account seamlessly. So to do that, you're going to get up here on these three dots and click that and click new incognito window. And you will see a black screen pop up here and a little logo up in the top right hand corner that says incognito. Okay. So our school uses Clever as kind of a central hub for links to websites and other digital platforms. So in order to access Clever, we are going to go through our school web page. And to get there, I'm just going to search Russell Independent Schools. And it's going to be this first link here. And now that I'm actually at my school web page, if I am a student or a parent trying to get into a Clever account, I'm going to go to the student section and click Clever Login. And this is going to pull up a page that asks for your login for grades K-12 and staff. And this is your regular school login or your child's regular school login. Okay, so I'm going to click on that. And I am using a sample student to log in here. Um, but when you log in or your child logs in, they're going to use their name in place of the sample student I'm using here. And it's going to be first name dot last name at stu dot russell ind ky schools. US. So once again, you would sub in your child's name here for the sample student that I have used. Click next. And then this password is going to be the same password that you have used for any school computer. Just enter that in and click sign in. And since I am incognito, I'm going to click no here. And this is a sample account. And this is going to pull up your clever web page. And you're going to see all kinds of different apps here. And you're going to search for the Google Classroom logo. And it's going to be this green logo right here. Click on that. And if this screen pops up, all I want you to do is to make sure that you have your name right here and click go to Google Classroom. If you're already linked through Clever, it may automatically log you in. But if you're not, it's going to prompt you to log in again. And you're going to use that same email that you just used to log into Clever. And it's going to be first name dot last name at stew dot Russell ind schools dot us. And once again, that same password that we just used before. We're going to log in here and it should pull you up to your Google Classroom account. So what you're going to see on your screen here, like on my sample student, is all of the classes that you or your child have already enrolled in. Okay. So if you're a high school student, you may have a few more different classes than elementary school st students do. But for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to take you through how to log into a new class or how to join a new class. So in order to join a new Google Classroom, you're going to click this plus sign right up here. Okay. And then it's going to prompt you to enter a class code. This is going to be provided on your schedule printout and from your classroom teachers. So I'm going to actually enter my own teacher code here so that my sample student can join my own classroom. And something that's important to note is that if, if your class code has like a zero, make sure you're entering a zero. Or if it has a letter O, make sure you're actually entering that letter. And the same goes for like I's and L's and ones. That way that you can effectively join the correct class. I'm just going to click join up in the top right hand corner. And it will pull up your new class that you just joined. So since I am the teacher, this is actually my class that I just logged my sample student into. Okay. So from this Google Classroom page, there's several things I want to point out. It's automatically going to put you onto your stream. So that's what we're on right now. Okay. And this is kind of like a feed where you will see notes from your teacher or assignments from your teacher. And if your teacher has the comment section on, you can actually add your own comment here to share something with your class. You can add a photo or share something appropriate here. However, this does get turned off sometimes just based off teacher um, preference. So you can make sure to check that on your own Google Classroom. 
Next thing I want to show you here is if you have anything due coming up, it, you will see it in this upcoming work section and it will have the due date there. I know that our school is, ha is um, implementing a policy where if a teacher assigns something on a certain day, it is due by nine o'clock that night unless he or she states otherwise. So this is a good way to stay organized by keeping track of the due dates over here on the left hand section. And one more thing on this page is this Google Meet link. You'll see my mouse hovering over it right now. Um, I know in the spring we had a lot of interfaces that we used for live teaching like Zoom and you had to have a specific link for each time. But we've kind of streamlined that here through Google Classroom using the Google Meet link. So anytime that your teacher wants you to go live, you will automatically click this link and it will take you to the section that he or she is teaching. Okay. Next, we're going to go to the classwork section, and this is actually where you're going to get most of your assignments. OK, all teachers are using this as a central hub for their assignments. So I have provided a sample assignment for my student here, and I'm going to open that up just to kind of show you what that would look like. You'll see the, the assignment title, the directions here, and then the attachments that the teacher has provided. So I just did a little Harry Potter read aloud and a Google form to go with that just for just for um, demonstration purposes. And the read aloud set or the uh, directions say to read. Complete the read aloud and then complete the activity after listening. OK, so if I were a student, I would go here to this audio. I would listen to the audio and then I would go to the Google form and complete the Google form. So what I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you what the Google form actually looks like from the inside. OK, so when I pull up a Google form, you, you'll see the types of questions and you can scroll down and see the types of the amount of points that each question is worth. OK, so I'm going to actually go through and and pretend like I am submitting this assignment so that you can see what it looks like. OK, read the question answer here. And there's an important point about the last question that I want to mention. This is a short answer question. OK. The computer will automatically mark your short answer wrong no matter how awesome your answer is. So what you have to do is you submit your answer and then the teacher will review your answer and submit your grade back to you later. So like I said, this is automatically going to mark this short answer wrong no matter what I put because the teacher has to review this section. So I'm just going to put a random answer in here and click submit. OK, so then this will say your response has been recorded and I can actually view my score. OK, and like I said, it's going to automatically grade the multiple choice so you can see what you got here. But then it is going to mark that wrong no matter what I put, because my teacher has to review this. So from the teacher side, I can go back in and give feedback specifically on that question and change this total grade up here. OK, then you can go back to your assignment by going to your tab that you just closed and click open assignment. And this is going to pull up the assignment that you just completed. And this is really, really important here. OK, it's really, really important that you click mark as done. OK, so I am showing you this mark as done section. Um, my sample student had already submitted this, so I unsubmitted that and I'm showing you the mark as done section. If you do not click mark as done, it will not show to your teacher that you completed that assignment. OK, and that's how you will get zeros. So no matter what, after you have submitted any assignment that looks like this, from the classwork section, you always go back to that assignment and click mark as done. OK, and sometimes this little section will pop up here that says you didn't attach work for the assignment. So your teacher will see that it is done. What is important to note here is some assignments will, requ will require you to attach work from other sources. But since this is just a Google form, I do not have to do this right now. So I can click mark as done and it will submit my Google form to my teacher and it will show my teacher that I not only did I submit it through the Google form, but I actually marked that as done and turned it in. And now you will see up here on the side, I'm highlighting it here that that work shows turned in. OK, one other important thing on this screen is this private comment section. This is where your teacher can provide feedback to you privately that the, and the rest of the class cannot see. And you can actually comment back to them 
and maybe ask them a question about the assignment. But this is private for nobody else to see except you and the teacher. So I'm going to go over here and show you how to navigate through your classes. Let's say that you've got two or three classes that you're doing work between. You open up that little side section there and you can click through that and switch between classes. And then when you click on this header up here, it's going to take you back to your classroom homepage. OK, if you need anything else or you come across something that you're confused about, you can email your teacher to ask them specific questions. And I hope you have a great start to your school year.